Ezra chapter 7. We continue in the book of Ezra as we study the word. Uh, the remarkable thing that Ezra is a book that's going to happen again. Now after these things, after these things is uh, what has been recorded, the temple being uh, finished. In the reign of Artaxerxes, king of Persia, Ezra the son of Siriah, the son of Azariah, the son of Hilkiah, the son of Shalom, the son of Zadok, the son of Ahiatub, the son of Amariah, the son of Azariah, the son of Marial, the son of Zerahiah, the son of Uzai, the son of Buckeye, the son of Bashua, the son of Phanases, the son of Elijah, Eleazar, the son of Aaron, the chief priest. So, we run a line here, going all the way back to Aaron of Ezra. His pedigree, his, his papers, his who he is. He ain't just nobody, he's, a, he's the line of Aaron. He's not just a priest, he's a, the, the chief priest, Aaron. And Ezra went up from Babylon, and he was a ready scribe, which means he prepared, he's fitted, he's fitted, he's furnished. In the law of Moses, he, he prepared himself in the law of Moses, he studied. Which the Lord God of Israel had given. And the king granted him all his requests, according to the hand of the Lord his God upon him. So whatever Ezra needed, prepared, sought from God, the king provided his needs. He seeks the king permission to leave. He doesn't just get up and leave and does what he wants to do. That wouldn't be proper. There's obeying the law, obeying the, the, the authorities. And there went up some of the children of Israel and the, pre, and the, the priests. And the Levites, again, all priests are Levites, but not all Levites are priests. And the singers, and the porters, and the Nephilims, unto Jerusalem in the seventh year of our Xerxes, the king. And he came to Jerusalem in the fifth month, which was in the seventh year of the, of the king. That's, that's a four-month trip from Babylon to Jerusalem. Now, that's an important documentation that God wants you to know that that trip took four months. For upon the first day of the first month began he to go up from Babylon, and on the second day of the fifth month came he to Jerusalem, according to the good hand of his God upon him. So he gives God the credit. And Ezra had prepared his heart to seek the law of the Lord. And to do it and to teach in Israel statue and judgments. So, anyone who wants to be somebody used by God has got to prepare his heart, not head, to seek the Lord. Here would be in the Old Testament, be the law of the Lord. And the scriptures say in the New Testament, be doers of the word and not hearers only. And teach it in Israel. You can find Ezra 7.10 in Paul's writings. Now Paul's not going to tell us to keep the law of the Lord. But we have responsibilities. We're to seek our heart for the Lord. To do it and to teach. Listen when the Bible says in Mark 16. Go ye all the world and preach the gospel. You think God wants to send a bunch of idiots. Who didn't learn and do nothing. Now why is every Bible in the market but the King James Bible when it says study to show thyself approved unto God a workman that needs not to be ashamed rightly divine the word of truth. Why is the word study removed from all the Bibles? Every single Bible removes study but the King James Bible. Whether you're going to go out and witness, or whether you're going to sit under a church, under a pastor. 
What do you think God's going to do? When you've been sitting underneath a pastor who's wrong. Do you think you're going to stand in the judgment seat of Christ and blame him? You're going to go back to Adam and Eve? Oh, Lord, you gave me her. Well, it was the snake's fault. Had the snake had anybody, he'd blame him. You're to study. Ezra, Ezra could find fault with somebody who was doing wrong in the Word of God because he studied the Word of God. Why is it the average Christian today is a jackass? And when somebody says something out of that pulpit when it's against Scripture, they just sit there like, mm, grass is good, yum, 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 yum. And they just swallow a whole bunch of berries that, that is going to get them all upset in the stomach, make them sick, and maybe even kill them. Ezra 7.10, you can match with Pauline doctrine. You can match with the New Testament scriptures, and that is us today. We are to seek and to prepare. But what do you do for prepare? You get everything you need to do what you're going to do. If you want to bake a cake, well, you get all the pans. You get the eggs. You get the box of stuff you need. You, you know, you set the oven to the temperature. You get everything done before you even start mixing and, and pouring. What's a Christian supposed to do by preparing? Get yourself saved, first of all. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. Second of all, get yourself in a Bible-believing church. I know they're rare. Third of all, get yourself the Bible, the King James 1611. Fourth of all, get yourself in prayer. Prepare. To seek the Lord. You seek the Lord in prayer. You seek the Lord by reading. Now you start using everything you gather. You go to church and hear the preaching. You start doing what his word is because it says to do it. I'm supposed to go out and teach, okay? I'm supposed to go out and tell people about Jesus, okay? I'm, a, I'm supposed to stay from all appearance of evil, okay? I'm supposed to try that which is good, find that which is good and stick to it, okay? I'm to try the spirits and make sure it's the right spirit, okay? That's doing it. And to teach. I've got 500 people saved this month. How many of you take it underneath your wing and show them how to, what to do as a Christian? What would you do with those 500? You know, Jesus said that they don't love the word over there in the Gospel of John. They don't keep the word. They're not saved. Don't tell me you got 500 people saved last month and four of them are in the church regularly. Don't give me 500. Now this is the copy of the letter that the king Artaxerxes gave unto Ezra the priest, the scribe, even the scribe of the words of the commandments of the Lord and of his statutes to Israel. All right, so here is a letter from the king carried by Ezra. This is an official document with the law of the Medes and Persian. You cannot alter this. Ezra's in charge with a piece of paper that is official. So it tells you that the king has much respect in Ezra. He doesn't think Ezra's a fool. He doesn't think Ezra's going to waste time. He doesn't think Ezra, Ezra, Ezra's going to waste time uh, 
treat this thing garbagey. You know, just throw it in a pile somewhere. Our Xerxes, King of Kings, look at that. King of Kings. You know what our Xerxes means? King of Kings. That's his name meaning. Unto Ezra the priest, a scribe of the law of the God of heaven. Look, look at that. He did the same thing that Di I believe it's Cyrus or Cyrus. Cyrus did. This is the God, big G, of heaven. Perfect peace. And at such a time. I make a decree that all they of the people of Israel, Jews, and of his priests and Levites, oh, he knows, it. look at that, he knows the three classes of the Jews, the people, the priests, and the Levites. And I keep telling you, everything is broken down into threes. There's Jews, there's saved, and there's the heathen. Here's a classification told that there's three types of Jews. The people, the priests, and the Levites. Well, you, what about the kings and all that? They're the people. In my realm, which are minded of their own free will, to go up to Jerusalem, go with me. Wow, he doesn't force anybody. He doesn't put church, state, religion. You want to go to Jerusalem with Ezra? You have free will. Go ahead. For as much as thou art sent of the king and of his seven counselors, so that king is our Xerxes. He's giving you a free will, but he's sending you. The command from the king is go, but you don't have to. You know what the, the command from God is? Be saved, but you don't have to. You know, Jesus said, go ye all the world, but you don't have to. That's an interesting little thing there. According to the law of thy God, which is in thy hand. Oh, Ezra is carrying the book of Moses with him. And to carry the silver and the gold which the king and his counselors have freely offered unto the God of Israel, whose habitation is in Jerusalem. Money is being provided by a Gentile king. So the Gentiles are going to have some kind of part in that building, that next temple. And all the silver and gold that thou canst find in all the gov all the providence of Babylon, with the free will offering of the people, and of the priests offering willingly for the house of thy God which is in Jerusalem. Of all the silver and gold that thou canst find in all the providence of Babylon. What's that mean? Interesting. And the free will offering of the people. And the priests. That thou mayest buy speedily with this money. And this is why the money is given. Bullocks. Rams. Lambs. With their meat offerings. And their drink offerings. And offer them upon the altar of the house of the Lord God, no, of the house of your God, which is in Jerusalem. 
So what he's telling them with the money that you take, you better buy the offerings that you need and everything to make those offerings possible. Better not lack when it comes to that altar. And whatsoever shall seem good to thee and to thy brethren to do with the rest of the silver and the gold that do after the will of your God. Any money that's left over after you provide everything for the sacrifices, go ahead and get what you need for that temple. But the sacrifices are priority one. The temple's already built. The altar's already set up. You don't need buildings material no more. The king is prioritizing that you need sacrifices, everything with those sacrifices, and if you have any money left over, get what you need. According to what God so it's not a blank check, but it's a blank check. To the will of God is when you are given money for God's purpose, there are priorities that you have to use the money for. Utility bills of the church are a priority, or they're going to come in next service and lights will be off. And when you got all the bills paid and there's extra money, you can use it for God's service, but use it for God's service. Now, I don't know if you can think of anything off the top of your head that you would use extra money to have that wouldn't be any benefit to the church and lost souls and to the same soul. I don't think you'll probably think of anything. No. Nobody would take the Lord's money and wastefully waste it. On stupid things that are unnecessary. I won't go there. I could if you want to, but we still got a few more chapters. I mean, you're to use God's money, use it rightly. I mean, there's just certain things you just don't rent to rebaptize people. The vessels also that are given thee for the service of the house of thy God, those deliver thou before the God of Israel. Those are all the pots, pans, shovels, and everything like that that's needed. And whatsoever more shall be needful for the house of thy God, which thou shalt have occasion to bestow, bestow it out of the king's treasure house. Now you go to Philemon chapter 19. Where Paul tells, say, listen, if Onassis owes you any money, you put it on my account. That's what Jesus Christ did with us. Look at that. King Artaxerxes becomes a type of Jesus Christ. He says before when we read before, I give an order, but you have a free will if you want to do it or not. Look at that. I will provide all the sacrifice and everything that's needed for the sacrifice. How about that? And by the way, if you need anything else, you put it on my account. And what's the Bible say? You are to ask in the name of Jesus Christ believing that God will give to you. How's that for a picture of Jesus Christ in a book that's very rarely read? Was that pointed out in a, in a study of Ezra? As we went on through? A Gentile king is a type of Jesus Christ. And he puts it in writing. What's the Bible say about Jesus? John chapter 1. In the beginning was the word. And the, word. the writing is Jesus Christ. It's from, it's from Jesus Christ. It's from the king of kings. Did you get that one? Christians, we got it in writing. 
66 bucks. What to do, what not to do, how to do, how not to do, what is expected of us, and what is not expected of us, what God promises, and what God didn't promise you. It's in writing from the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. And I, even I, our Xerxes the King, do make a decree to all the treasurers which are beyond the river, Euphrates, that whosoever Ezra the priest, well, wait a minute, wait a minute. Let's get this right now. According to Revelation chapter 1, about verses 7 through 9, somewhere in there, the Bible says that we born again Christians are what? Priests. You know what you're supposed to carry? Ezra's carrying a letter from God. He's a priest just like we are a priest. His genealogy that's found in chapter 7, our genealogy is found through Jesus Christ. Ezra's holding a letter from the King of Kings. We're holding a letter from the King of Kings. Our Xerxes lays it all down. Jesus Christ laid it all down. Oh, it's chapter 7, which means complete. Number 7 in the Bible is complete. Shall we just haphazardly just finish up the verse so we can say we studied Ezra and then go on? And we're not even doing verse. I mean, listen, if I were to make out the verses here, and we were to go through the Bible verse by verse by verse, we can park in chapter 7 and park here for about a year, maybe. What do they tell you when you read the Bible? If you're reading through Ezra chapter 7 and you come to, to verse 28, if you don't find who in that chapter, what are you supposed to do? If you don't find Jesus in your reading, you need to go back and pray to God and say, Lord, I need to find Jesus. We just found Jesus. Not well, more than 48 prophecies about Jesus Christ. I mean, you're, this guy right here, his life, not prophetically, but his life describes what Jesus Christ was. If those Pharisees, Sadducees, scribes, and all that were, read to Ezra, wouldn't they have recognized Jesus Christ? Verse 21, the scribe of the law of the God of, of, of heaven shall require of you do it, it require of you it be done speedily why why speedily because you don't know when the Lord's coming either day or night I made a big mistake I was told to give somebody money last week and I didn't do it I said wait now they're not going to get that money I just may mail him a check, but still. I did it my way, not God's way. It may not be the pure blessing that it would have been. Unto a hundred talents of silver, a hundred measures of wheat, to a hundred baths of wine, to a hundred baths of oil, and salt without prescribing how much. You can find that salt in Leviticus 2.13. Says, God says, listen, I want sodium. Lay the salt on. Yeah, there's a quite possibility that the scientists are wrong. I mean, they're wrong about e eggs are good for you, eggs are bad for you. Eggs are good for you, eggs are bad for you. Yolks are good for you, but the whites are not good. Whites are good, but the yolks are not good. The whites and the yolks are good. Don't eat the shells. One thing we know, we don't know nothing at all. There's something in that message about the silver. Jesus Christ was, was Judas sold him out for silver. Wheat. Jesus said, look unto the harvest, it's white unto the snow. 
wine. Type of blood of Jesus Christ, the new, the new wine. Oil. Jesus Christ is anointed. We're anointed. Salt. You are the salt of the earth. Who, whatsoever is commanded by the God of heaven, let it be done diligently, done for the house of the God of heaven. Now, if you don't see Jesus Christ there, you need a bigger microscope and you need to pray. Because when Jesus is on this earth, what did he tell everyone to do? Follow God in heaven, the Father. This guy right here is saying, listen, you listen to the God of heaven. That's what Jesus kept saying. I come not of my own. I come to do the will of my Father. Why calls me good? There's none good but the Father. Had you known the Father, you would have known me. For I am sent of the Father, he kept saying. This is his interest how Jesus Christ is in Ezra chapter 7. For why should there be wrath against the realm of the king and his sons? This guy fears God unlike Pharaoh in the book of Exodus. Now this is not the type of Jesus Christ here because Jesus Christ didn't have no fear. But we are the son of Jesus, right? And if we don't do what we're supposed to, there could be the wrath of God upon us. Not hell. We could lose our life. God could make us sick. God could make us weak. God could take us home early. We could lose rewards. Listen, when a child doesn't do what he's supposed to, and he's loved by the Father, the wrath of the Father is, listen, I'm going to take it away from you. I'll disown you, but you're still my child. But, you know, our relationship together is broken. But it's not hell for the, for the Christian. But the king fears the God. If only Pharaoh in the book of Exodus would have feared like this guy fears. And he's fearing for his sons, too. Look at that. You know the son sits in heaven with the father and calms God down because of things we do? You remember Israel in the wilderness, the children of God. It wasn't for Moses. Those guys, and listen, they ever said if Moses and God ever got angry together, that's it. Israel would have been gone. You know, Jesus Christ sits in heaven today and is praying for us. The Holy Spirit is praying, making intercessions for us. How many times have God gotten so angry at us Christians and was like, Father, he's under the blood. Remember, Father, they're just dust. They're just... They're not holy. Remember, Father, I died for them. See, we don't see what goes on behind the scenes. Everybody thinks God is just a hunky, lonely, dory God, you know, fruity tooty. Also, we certify you. Certify means, listen, this is official. That touching any of the priests and Levites, singers, porters, Nephilims, and ministers. He knew about the Nephilims. Wouldn't you get the slight little chance there that Artaxerxes has maybe read the Bible that the Jews had? <laughs> he, I mean, where would he get this stuff from outside the Holy Spirit? Either the Holy Spirit's working with this guy, and the Holy Spirit's working with him. Guess what? He's in good comfort with God. Or he's read the words of the prophets. He's read the words of David. 
He knows what the law is. I mean, he gives you an exact list. Notice in verse 17, he doesn't say rattlesnakes. He doesn't say pig. What's the one thing the Gentiles love? They love the pig. Why didn't he say swine? He knew exactly what animals God wanted. How did he know that? He must have had his nose in the book. Imagine a Gentile like this guy, he's got, maybe has his nose in a book or he's listening to the Holy Spirit, stand up. Imagine, listen, God calls one of his Christians up and says, All right, sir, you want to come here for a minute? You want to tell this Christian, which had 66 books, you want to tell him what you did? How you did it? How much you listened to me? You want to tell this weak, stupid Christian about your life? Listen, there are Christians out there who don't even know who Habakkuk is. It's a shame and sickening that they don't know the Bible story, but we can, you know, we can bring in the, these little books, we can bring the comic book, we can bring the junk into the schoolhouse, we can bring it into the, the, the Sunday school, we can bring it into the adult study, all these junks, videos, and all the garbage, but we don't know who the people are in the Bible. We don't know their story. Shame. It shall not be lawful to impose toll, tribute, or custom upon them. Clergy exception by the law. Is it wrong for churches in America to be tax exempt? I'm going to answer that question yes and no. No, it's in the scriptures. Yes, the United States Internal Revenue Service will let you sign on and then they'll shut you up from the pulpit, scaring you that your people can't claim what they give on taxes. But yet, let me tell you something else if you do a little searching. I forget what the number is called, 401, something like that. That's 401k. There's something there. If churches sign on, you know, they can get recognition from the IRS. But there's already in the IRS, without signing nothing, as a church, you still can claim you are still given the right of tax exemption without proclaiming nothing. If you go the other route, they can tell you, okay, shut up and don't tell who who can who the people can vote for in the next election, even though there are churches out there that do that. I mean, it's the perfect race to tell you who to vote for. I say that tongue in cheek. And thou, Ezra, after the wisdom of thy God that is in thy hand. Wait a minute. And is what? What's he holding? The book of Moses. Did you just get what the king said? That's something to be missed, isn't it? What did he just call the book of Moses? Wow, you want to have that for a Jeopardy question? 1,000 points? Now let me ask you something. I know the Old Testament is, you know, the salvation is it's not balanced. You didn't have eternal life in the salvation. But let me ask you, what is the odds of seeing Artaxerxes in heaven right now from what you're reading? It wouldn't be as far as 100%. Like I said, we're in the Old Testament. I would put like 75% chance that this guy is going to be in heaven. He just called God's word wisdom. You don't even get born-again Christians that call God's word wisdom. They call it dashboard, back seat, on top of the roof. Uh, keep the table from wobbling. Dust collector. 
I'm enjoying this. God is showing me so much in this work. I wish I was writing this down. Alright. Set magistrates and judges, which may judge all the people that are beyond the river. He's telling them, set up a government. Don't let the people become this lawful. Don't let them be unlawful. Don't let them be rowdy and unruly. And now, did you know who he told to be the judge and set up judge? He told a man of God. A Gentile told a man of God. You know, by this king here, you know who are supposed to set up the judges in the in the land? The people of God. And then when I watched the other day. A guy go up to the witness stand. He rose his right hand and said, I showed to tell the whole truth, nothing but the truth, so help me. I didn't know if they said God. I couldn't hear the stupid thing. I've been great if I could have read it or heard it. And there was no Bible for him to put his hand on. I'm willing to bet 65% that God was not mentioned in that old. And yet, when even in this family, when, when I'm called to question, if I'm right about it, I tell you right now, go get my Bible, and I swear to it. You know I'm telling the truth when I say that. All such as know the laws of thy God. What's that one mean? Run back to verse 10 again. He said, don't you dare set up a judge that does not know what the law of Moses says. You see how much this guy is in the word of God? He says, you set up kings and they better know what the law is. Why? What did the law say about judges? He said, you're to judge the people righteously. You're to judge them holy. And if you have a cause you don't know, you come to God. If you don't know what the law or you can't tell... Then you go to God. Listen, our church is saying, listen, don't you waste God's time because you didn't know, because you didn't look in the law, and you don't know what the law says about it. How about that one? Don't waste God's time. A lot of people ask stupid questions because they don't know they don't go in the Bible and read. And teach ye, that teach ye them that know them not. So the people are to be taught the law of Moses. He didn't say have evolution in the schools. He says have the book of Moses in the schools and teach them and teach the people what they're to do. This is B.C. before Christ. A.D. 2013, America doesn't even know better enough. They don't even know what men's and women's room means today in America. And whosoever will not do the law of thy God and the law of the king, notice how he puts God first, then the king. Do you know what the order of the family is? It's God, Jesus Christ, the husband. The order of all the universe is God, the son. Yes, Jesus Christ is God and God is Jesus Christ, but there's still that part of the Trinity that God is over his son. You just saw that in verse 26. God is first, then King Jesus. How about that one? Let judgment be executed speedily upon him. Don't waste time. The law says if somebody killed somebody, you kill them right then and there. At the mouth of two or three witnesses. You don't waste time. Don't let you know, don't let them sit in jail for 40 years. You know why America's bankrupt? You got people sitting in jail. You're giving them money to, taking care of them. You're not supposed to be taking care of them. 
whether it be unto death, capital punishment, or banishment, get out of the land, or to confiscate of goods, taking property. Now listen, this guy here, he knows the law. He just said, if you take a lamb, you shall pay five lambs or four or five lambs for a lamb. Look at that. He knows the law says that there are capital punishment offenses that are to be taken part. Or to imprisonment. You can follow that with 1 Peter 2.13 and Romans chapter 13, obeying the government. Which a lot of Christians today, a lot of pastors, a lot of people who are in the churches don't want to obey because they don't like the man that's in the White House. Blessed be the Lord God of our fathers. Now this is Ezra. Which has put such a thing as this in the king's heart. You know what he's saying right there? He's got his mouth open to the ground like. This guy's being more righteous than his fathers are. The nation of Israel have been worshiping idols, killing their children, and doing everything, green trees and all that. And here's a Gentile looking at, looking at Ezra, who's a Jew, a man of God. And this guy is more faithful than the Jews have been. And he's like, Can I draw your blood and, and test it? Because I think you, I think you're a Jew. Do you know that when Jesus spoke His words on this earth, very little Jews were happy and pleased? Oh, they had a party for him when he came on the earth, walking into the city, but a week later, they're yelling, crucify him. <clears throat> to beautiful, beautifully, beautifully, the house of the Lord, which is in Jerusalem, and has extended mercy unto me. Oh, me, who, what's that? That's a pronoun. Describing who? So guess who the author of the book is? There you go. Before the king and his counselors. Oh, so the king did not do this in the closet. All his men were present. You know, Jesus Christ never spoke in secret. He spoke in presence of the twelve disciples. Jesus Christ did all he did in front of all the angels, in front of God, in front of all the devils in hell, in front of the devil himself, and went into hell with all the devils down in hell. Say, how you guys doing? Give me the keys. Goodbye. Jesus Christ did not do anything secretly. Don't tell the pastor. We're going to have a secret birthday party for him. And you know, make a bogey, 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 do your secret handshake to tell somebody that you're part of an organization and all that. It's a secret. You don't find one Christian in the Bible, you don't find one man of God in the Bible keeping anything in secret. Counselor, and before all the king's mighty princes, and he did it wide open. And I, yep, there's that pronoun, was strengthened as the hand of the Lord, my God, was upon me. Where do you get his strength from? He got it from the king. The king who? Who we've been looking at? Who are we to get our strength from? Working out. I do it at the gym. No. No. That's strange one day if you live to be 60, 65, a bling. What's it say in Proverbs 31 about that virtuous woman? Beauty is vain. Uh, 
There's a woman that fears the Lord, she shall be praised. I get strength in pills, I get strength up no. And I gathered together out of all out of Israel chief men to go up with me. Takes people with him. And they go. What a wonderful chapter about the Lord Jesus Christ, I'm telling you. And we'll stop there.